Hi, I'm John, the Banking Systems Engineer, Termel, and Lesson 40 is a New York Times article from December 26, 2004, titled, Argentina's Economic Rally Defies Forecasts. No kidding. We'll see if they tell us how they did it or not. This New York Times article was posted by Malachi at Freaker.net, uh, 2004, December 27th. And it was a New York Times article, Argentina's Economic Rally Defies Forecasts. Now, how do you think they're going to explain the resuscitation of Argentina's destroyed economic engine without mentioning how all the provinces switched to using their own small denomination provincial bonds as interest-free currencies, or the credito systems that allowed farmers to spend their grain dollars with major corporations, and even the federal government printing pesos backed up by the public projects they were financing, and after all that government government money system had collapsed. Imagine. So, they have no choice but to try to cover up the real reason for the revival, the interest-free currencies. So, let's see how the New York Times explains what I've been telling you has been going on. The real revolution is in unorthodox financing of projects, and they're going to give credit to whom? So, Malachi said the article is basically about how Argentina has made a surprisingly strong economic recovery over the past few years by ignoring and going directly against the policies mandated by the IMF. Naturally, the New York Times seems to frame this story in terms like most mainstream economists have no idea how this could happen. Of course, something like this simply isn't explainable by those who hold the theory of free market f fanaticism. So, all that money being pumped into circulation should have made inflation go through the roof. And instead, it went the other way and they're all flabbergasted. How can adding money into circulation bring inflation down? They had to ask themselves because they didn't know about shift the inflation. So, the article, December 26, 2004, Argentina's Economic Rally Defies Forecasts by Larry Rotter, R-O-H-T-E-R. Buenos Aires, when the Argentine economy collapsed in December 2001, three years ago, doomsday predictions abounded unless it adopted or, or, sorry, orthodox economic policies and quickly cut a deal with foreign creditors. Hyperinflation would surely follow. The peso would become worthless. Investment and foreign reserves would vanish and all the prospect of growth would be strangled. Well, we know the hyperinflation didn't happen, even though the peso did become worthless, investment in foreign reserves did vanish, everybody had no money, and yet the prospect of growth was not strangled. But three years after Argentina declared a record debt default of more than $100 billion, the largest in history, the apocalypse has not arrived. Instead, the economy has grown by 8% for two consecutive years. Exports have zoomed. The currency is stable. Investors are gradually returning and unemployment has eased from record highs, all without a debt settlement or the standard measures required by the IMF for its approval. Argentina's recovery has been undeniable and it's been achieved at least in part by ignoring and even defying economic and political orthodoxy. Rather than moving to immediately satisfy bondholders, private banks and the IMF as other developing countries have done in less severe crises. Now, notice how he doesn't explain how that is done. So you can bet it's something horrible. The words are in an economic code that means rather than slash the government's budget for the poor to pay interest for the rich, as other countries are now doing in similar situations, that's what he means, the pitterness led government chose to stimulate real consumption first and told creditors to get in line with everyone else. Well, they didn't do much to stimulate, but they did tell the creditors to wait. Now, why doesn't everyone just tell the creditors to wait in line? like they did, and then stimulate the economy. Most people are drowning and have no choice. People on a larger and larger growing lifeboat have such a choice of leaving the ship. Nations without let's lifeboats, Australia Bolton, January 9th, 1990, called 
let's lifeboats, have no resistance to being tied up and enslaved by their orthodox financial threads or chains. Nations with independent let's lifeboats can resist by using their own unorthodox financial threads instead of the interest-bearing, never-ending debt ones. And with the adoption of the time standard of money, uniting all such disparate time-trading financial mechanisms, it becomes a supranational unilets without even needing the UN to get it organized. That's why he could tell creditors to screw off. Their lifeboat of provincial currencies was working out just fine. Now, they continue, this is a remarkable historical event telling the creditors to screw off, one that challenges 25 years of failed policies, which is give the creditors all your money and starve. Said Mark Weisbot, an economist, economist at the Center for Economic and Policy Research, a liberal research group in Washington. So, same thing happened when the Argentinian states issued their own local provincial bond currencies in the mid-1980s. More money in circulation meant inflation shift B went from 1,000% down to 36%, confounding World Bank predictions. How they were persuaded to give up those provincial currencies will be one of the more interesting stories once the money war is over. So they continue, while other countries are just limping along, Argentina is experiencing very healthy growth with no sign that it is unsustainable. So what they're doing has, so what they're doing has been taught to be unsustainable, yet shows no sign of being as predicted. So it's an economic miracle. The miracle equation rules. Zero interest loans is the optimum way to finance life. Interest-bearing loans is the optimum way to finance death and slavery. Having lost all their money, they've managed to make their economy fly without any new loans. Right? Isn't that what that means? Rather than use foreign interest-bearing loans they probably couldn't even get, they use something else. Something that did magic. Will they identify it in the story? Wanna bet? So, LR, that's the reporter. The consequences of that decision can be seen in government statistics and in stores, where consumers once again were spending robustly before Christmas. Well, let's face it, they got provincial bonds, they got social creditos, federal pesos. I mean, why wouldn't they be out there spending when they all got jobs again? More than 2 million jobs have been created since the depths of the crisis early in 2002. Bam! And according to official figures, inflation-adjusted income has also bounced back, returning almost to the level of the 1990s. So, the local employment trading software ends up being a very powerful national employment trading software, too. Remember, with almost no internal debt, remember how it all canceled out? I explained that. Nobody owes anything to anybody anymore in excess of true net debt because it was all canceled out by all this money in their pockets. So, remember, no internal debt. With always enough currency to finance any worthwhile project, which remain available for people, which have people available to work, no wonder they bounce back with no money from the IMF, World Bank. How'd they do that? With no foreign capital inflows. How'd they do that? LR, that is when the crisis emerged as Argentina sought to tighten its belt according to IMF prescriptions only to collapse into the worst depression in its history, which also set off a political crisis. Some of the new jobs are from a low-paying government make-work project, but nearly half are in the private sector. Bam! Where people have no money. So, gee, where'd the private sector come up with money if there was no new foreign capital inflows and all the old money had flown out? The original problem, right? Without any inflows, what had to substitute to do the job? Well, the Times mentioned the only possible answer that we know about. LR. As a result, unemployment has declined from more than 20% to about 13%, and the number of Argentines living below the poverty line has fallen by nearly 10 points from a record high of 53% early in 2002. Well, don't forget, I say, unemployed can mean doing things in the large underground economy, which would explain why everybody's eating and in little debt 
but there's still 40% of the people not officially employed for federal cash. They could be living on the underground cash comfortably. LR. Things are by no means back to normal, but we've got the feeling we're on the right track, said Mario Alberto Ortiz, a refrigeration repairman. For the first time since things fell apart, I can actually afford to spend a little money. What money? If there were no inflows after there'd been such a great outflow, where did the money come from that he feels flush enough to spend? Will they identify the source or just leave it as a miracle, still in need of explaining by the school of economic witch doctors? My apologies to witch doctors.